जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं यो व्यक्ति तत्वत त्यक्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नेति माम इति सो अर्जुन can you please read the translation also yeah sure one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving the body take his birth again in this in this material world but attains my eternal abode o arjuna so we read from the purport of his divine by his divine grace is devadanta swamishla prabhupada the lord's descent from his transcendental abode is already explained in the sixth verse one who can understand the truth of the appearance of the personality of godhead is already liberated from material bondage and therefore he returns to the kingdom of god immediately after quitting this present material body so krishna says that he comes millennium after millennium he comes and he comes by his own will his own internal potency his his form is not material like our form and he's not forced to take birth in this material world like we are forced we are not given a choice oh where we we don't have a questionnaire to fill out you know oh which universe you want to be born in which species what gender what community no we just find ourselves in this body and then at some day we'll be thrown out of this body and we'll find ourselves in another body so but for krishna it's not like that and krishna is saying that one who can understand one who can just understand about his appearance he's liberated no need to come back to the material world again so krishna is so kind he's so kind and so merciful he wants us to come back to him as soon as possible and so he's giving us this easy ways he's giving us easy ways to come back we just now heard the the glories of chanting the holy name just chant the holy name and go back home and then here he's saying you just understand that my appearance is transcendental it's not material and when you give up the body you can go back home you don't need to come to the material world again so he's so compassionate so compassionate and then so such liberation of the living entity from material bondage is not at all easy the impersonalists and the yogis attain liberation only after much trouble and many many births even then the liberation they achieve merging into the impersonal brahma jyoti of the lord is only partial and there is a risk of returning to this material world so now if we say okay i'm not going to try to understand krishna i want to get liberated by my own strength i want nothing to do with krishna and i want to leave this material world by my own endeavor then what happens then it's very difficult it's going to take us many many lifetimes many lifetimes we have been hearing in bhagavatam that mm, to get perfection by meditation the yogis have to meditate for 10000 years 60000 years now we do not have that time that much time in this kalyug we don't have it barely we live even 100 years and that also so many of our years up you know gone by just trying to understand what is what so that's the reason the easiest process that is recommended in this age of kali for us is uh, chanting the holy name kali yuga dharma hari naam sankirtan because um the the path of yoga ashtanga yoga for example was the path in satyug for self realization then in treta yug the path of self realization was to perform yagyas big big yagya and in dwapar yug the path was deity worship but we do not have that kind of resources we do not have that kind of mental or physical capabilities in this kalyug so the path has been made, made very easy for us lord chaitanya says just chant the holy name and krishna is saying understand my appearance understand my form is transcendental prabhupad gives the example he would say that if the king is going to meet the prisoners he is going there out of his own free will if a prisoner thinks that oh the king was caught 
by the policeman and because he did something bad and that's why he's here, then the prisoners are in delusion. Their thinking is wrong. The king has just come inside to meet them, say hello to them, see if anyone wants to come out into normal society. That's all. And uh, then the man, if, if I take the path, so if I take the path, I want to leave the world by my own endeavor, then that path is going to be very difficult. If I say, I don't want to talk to Krishna, I don't want anything to do with Krishna, I'm going to try to leave this material by myself. So it will take me many, many, many years. And that also, I will be able to reach only up to the spiritual sky, only up to the Brahma Jyoti. I cannot enter the uh, spiritual planet. I cannot enter the Vaikuntha planet. Why? Because each and every Vaikuntha planet is resided over by Krishna or his uh, various expansions as Narayan. So I will just reach up to the uh, spiritual sky. And then once I reach up to the spiritual sky, there is a, a very high chance of coming back to this material world. Why? Because I have not yet entered into the planets. I've not yet entered into a, a planet. So it's like, you know, we go up in the space. How long can we keep flying in the space? We want to come back to the earth, you know, at some point of time. How long can we keep flying? So that's that's the, the comparison. So, but the devotee, simply by understanding the transcendental nature of the body and activities of the Lord, attains the abode of the Lord after ending his body and does not run the risk of returning to this material world. So, but so now, on the other hand, if I just accept Krishna's proposal, what is Krishna's proposal? He's saying, you just try to understand that when I come, my form that you, people are able to see, that is transcendental. It is spiritual, not material. And all the activities that I'm doing, my leelas, my pastimes, they are also all transcendental. You just try to understand this. And when you give up this body, you can get liberation. Is he's making it as easy as that. And, and he's saying, when you get liberated, you're going to enter into one of the spiritual planets. And in that way, you do not need to come back to the material world again. So the choice is mine. Do I want to take Krishna's proposal or not? But he is saying, if you take my proposal, it's really very easy. You know, it's just easy. Okay, Krishna's body, his form is transcendental and his activities are transcendental. Just try to understand this and then give up this body and no need to come back to the material world. So in the Brahma Samhita 533, it is stated that the Lord has many, many forms and incarnations. Advaitam, Achyutam, Anadim, Ananta, Rupam. Although there are many transcendental forms of the Lord, they are still one and the same supreme personality of Godhead. One has to understand this fact with conviction although it's incomprehensible to mundane scholars and empiric philosophers. So Brahma Samhita, the prayers spoken by Brahmaji, he is saying that the Lord has many forms, so many expansions, Lord Nishinga Dev, Kurma Avatar, Matsya Avatar, Nishinga Avatar, Ramachandra, you know, there's so many. These are just a few. Krishna's expansions, his incarnations are unlimited. But what is the understanding is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead is Sri Krishna and all these forms are his expansions and yet God is only one. They are not that there are many gods. No, all these are his expansions. All these forms are his plenary portions or portions of his plenary portions. God is still only one. So he's saying you just have to understand this fact. Eko Devo Nitya Lila Anurakto Bhakta Vyapi Hridi Antaratma. The one supreme personality of Godhead is eternally engaged in many, many transcendental forms in relationships with his unalloyed devotees. So this is what the Purusha Bodhini Upanishad is saying. There is one God. One supreme personality of Godhead. But he has many, many, many forms. He has many expansions. And what is he doing in these expansions? He's having relationships with the devotees. 
So Krishna is very kind. Some devotee wants to see him as Jagannath. He takes the form of Jagannath. Somebody wants to have a relationship with him as Lord Ramachandra. He appears as Lord Ramachandra. You know, he is Bhakta Vatsal. How does a devotee want to? Hmm, what kind of a relationship he wants to have with him? Then he, he, he takes on, he expands himself into that form. This Vedic version is confirmed in this verse of the Gita personally by the Lord. He who accepts this truth on the strength of the authority of the Vedas and of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and who does not waste time in philosophical speculations attains the highest perfectional stage of liberation. So the proposal is that simply by accepting this truth on faith, one can, without a doubt, attain liberation. The, the proposal is just accept this, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he has many, many expansions, and all his forms are transcendental. They are all equally potent, have all these energies of his, but, but God is only one. These are only his expansions. And the proposal is just accept it. If you don't accept it and you say, no, I'm going to try to understand it through logic with my material mind, what's going to happen? We are not going to accept it and we are going to waste our time in trying to do some philosophical speculation with our material mind. Anyway, we will not be able to understand because we cannot understand the spiritual with our material mind. We just have to receive the knowledge of the Vedas. And what's the proposal? That just accept it. And what, you, what do we get? Liberation. No need to come back to this material world. Go back home, back to Godhead. It's as easy as that. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Why is the acceptance is only the problem? I'm sorry? Why is in today's world, acceptance is the only problem? Like no, people have, that's the most difficult thing to do. Yes, that's right. Why? Why is it so difficult? Why? Or because we are saying, why should we think Krishna is God? I'm God. Why is he God? That's the reason we are here in this material world. Each of us is thinking, why is Krishna God? You know, maybe I'm God, you know. How do you know? I'm, maybe I'm God. You know, maybe I'll, I'll get so much knowledge. Maybe I'll get so much knowledge and one day I'll become God. But not everyone will think that. Everybody may not be thinking that they, must, they are like, they are God. Then some of us think, oh, no, maybe there is no God at all. Why should I believe? The reason, reasons can be any, but why, why I'm asking, why is acceptance so difficult? Be it for not only for not only for uh, the scriptures, what's mentioned in scriptures, but acceptance in totality. Like, this, the, yeah, that's the reason I'm saying that is the reason we are here in the material world because we do not accept Krishna as God. We are here in the material world. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter that every living entity in this material world is born out of delusion and hate. Delusion and hate. We are, we are born here in the material world because we are thinking, why is Krishna God? Why I am not God? And because of this desire of us, we are right now in this material body. And because of this, it is difficult for us to accept it. But Krishna consciousness is the original position of every soul, of every living entity. And how do we revive that Krishna consciousness is simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and hearing from Bhagavad Gita and Bhag Bhagavatam. So the more we hear and the more we chant, this acceptance will become easier. That's the only way. We keep on hearing, keep on chanting, and we will accept it because it is our natural position. Right now, it's in a we are in the diseased condition, as Prabhupada would say. Material life means diseased condition because we are inside this material body. We are not supposed to have a material body. We are spirit souls. It's because of lack of knowledge that there's no acceptance. Because of our ignorance, no? yes. Lack of knowledge, our ignorance, yes. I, I feel that's the only cause. Yes. 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 
Ignorance, yes. So then how to revive our natural Krishna consciousness? Chanting here, hearing and chanting. Hare Krishna. Yes, yes, ignorance of our 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 original position. That's what it is. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So the Vedic version, Tattvam Asi, is actually applied in this case. Anyone who understands Lord Krishna to be the supreme, or who says unto the Lord, "You are the same supreme Brahman, the personality of Godhead." is certainly liberated instantly and consequently his entrance into the transcendental association of the Lord is guaranteed. So the guarantee is here. Anyone, each of us, we just understand Lord Krishna is the supreme personality of God him. We just understand that. And, and we tell to him, my dear Lord, my dear Krishna, you are the supreme personality of God him. You are this cause of the Brahman. Brahman is coming from your body. The Brahman effulgence is coming from your body. You are the Supreme Lord. Eh? That is liberation. You can go back, back home, back to Godhead. So Krishna is making it easy for us. He's saying just hear and chant and your ignorance will go away and you will revive your Krishna consciousness. We will come to this point. You know, we will come. Because it's, it's a science, right? Science of Krishna consciousness means you apply it and it has to happen. Like you take some chemical, you mix it up and you will get some, you know, some, some product out of it. That's how it's science, practical application of knowledge. Hmm? So that's the reason when we apply the knowledge. Huh? What is that? We are hearing from Bhagavatam, Bhagavatita, we chant and this is, we are guaranteed to come to this platform because that's our natural position. It is our natural position. In other words, such a faithful devotee of the Lord attains perfection. And this is confirmed in the following Vedic assertion. That tam eva vidit mrityum eti nanya pantha vidyate yanaya. One can attain the perfect stage of liberation from birth and death simply by knowing the Lord the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And there is no other way to achieve this perfection. So, Hare Krishna. Yes. My question is, in this age of Kali, is there any certain degree or certain level of ignorance is acceptable? As in like, for example, if some person, if someone is saying that, okay, and I'm, I'm not I'm not a Krishna conscious, but I am not giving harm to somebody. I'm being good to some. I'm I'm being good to everyone. That is also an ignorance. You can say like I'm I'm, I'm doing. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I I don't have anything in my heart for anyone, and uh, I don't mean any harm to anyone. That is also. That is also a level of that is also a certain degree of ignorance, but such ignorance is it acceptable in the age of Kali because anybody won't become Krishna conscious. That's also for sure. So, is there any anything acceptable? Any any degree, any percentage, or any any degree of ignorance acceptable in the age of Kali? Um. See, you are saying that it's true, not everyone is going to become Krishna conscious, but at least we have to come to the point of understanding uh, that I'm not the body, I'm the soul. But if I'm saying that I'm just good to everyone, but then I'm still on the platform of the body, right? So ignorance, when you say acceptable, of course, the, the, the reason this whole material world is made Krishna has made this whole material world so that we can live here peacefully and then give it back, uh, give it up and go back home, back to Godhead. Means while we are living, we live here peacefully, cultivate spiritual knowledge, chant here, and at the end of life, go back home. That is what is acceptable, actually. Until the time we don't do that, we will continue to remain here in the material world. So when you say acceptable, it is, you have to see accepted by who? Because it's our personal choice. It doesn't matter to anyone else, you know? 
it doesn't make any difference to anyone else. Of course, Krishna misses us. He, he wants us to go back home as soon as possible. The devotees, the pure devotees, they have compassion for us. They are seeing us suffering. So that's why they want us, um, they are telling us, here, take, take this Krishna consciousness process and come back home. But nowadays, nowadays, being pious, everybody, everybody, everyone has its, has their own definition of being a pious person. So somebody who is having a feeling that, okay, I am not, I don't want to harm, I'm not giving any harm to anyone, or at least like, you know, I'm being good to everyone. That makes me pious person. So that kind of that kind of attitude, though it's an ignorant mode, is it acceptable also? But when you say acceptable, what does it mean? Uh, acceptable in the sense like you know when they are when the day when the like you know uh, on the last day of your life like you know when your when the account is being settled like you know at the day, like, you can can you say that you know what I didn't I didn't harm anyone. So like you know, I shouldn't be I shouldn't be like you know punished or kind of thing. Like, you know? But you know what? You know, just by living, how many, just by breathing, how many living entities are we harming? <laughs> you know that there, there's so many germs in the sky, uh, in this air around us. We breathe in, how many, they are all living entities. When we just, you know, rub our hand or something, how many living entities are being killed? So law of karma is very intricate. And by us saying, oh, I'm not harming anyone, that is my viewpoint. That is my belief. But my belief does not become a fact. The fact is different. And what's the fact is that I will still continue to remain in the material world when the day of judgment comes. Okay, you didn't do any, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, any harm in this life. Okay, maybe you did a lot of good activities in this life. Then what? Okay, then you go to the heavenly planet. Go to the heavenly planet and enjoy a nice life, but you're still in the material world. And then when that quota finishes of living in that heavenly planet, again, we will come back either to the earth or in animal life, depends again on the cycle of karma where we are. So it still keeps us in the material world, you know. Okay, okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So then, um, Shatish, the Shweta Shwatara Upanishad 3.8, it states, oh, that's a nice question, Vishal, because so many of us think, oh, I'm nice, I'm nice. So when the day of judgment comes, I'm nice. Well, if I've really done nice things, yes, then I will go to heavenly planets and enjoy a lot, but I'll still be here in the material world. So now the liberation, perfect stage of liberation. Perfection means, perfection of human life is that we understand who we are, why we are here, reestablish our relationship with God and go back home, back to Godhead. And so here is said, there is no other way to achieve this perfection, but it can be understood only by knowing the Lord, simply, just simple, just by understanding the Supreme Lord. We don't need to take this a birth and death, go to higher planets or go to animal life or hellish planets and get liberation just by understanding this simple knowledge that there is no alternative means that anyone who does not understand Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is surely in the mode of ignorance and consequently he will not attain salvation simply, so to speak, by licking the outer surface of the bottle of honey or by interpreting the Bhagavad Gita according to mundane scholarship. So that means till the time we do not accept that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Till the time we don't accept it, we do not understand it, till that time we will continue to remain in this material world. 
Now, the choice is ours that we want to accept it in this life or try to understand it in this life, or I want to do it in a future life. That Krishna does not force us. That is our freedom. But he says that if you want to get out of this material world, you just have to come to this point. Till the time you don't come to this point, you cannot get out of the material world. You cannot get, uh, cannot go back home, back to Godhead. Such empiric philosophers may assume very important roles in the material world, but they are not necessarily eligible for liberation. So somebody might be appearing as very learned, as you know, appears to have a lot of knowledge, but till the time he's not come to this point of understanding Krishna, of accepting Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even though he is in such an important role, he can't get liberated. Can't. Krishna says in the, in the what is Devihi Esha Gunamai, Mam Maya Duratyaya, Mam Eva Ye Prapadyante, Mayam Etam Tarantite. He says, This divine energy of mine is very difficult to overcome, but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. So he's saying this divine energy of mine, this material world, the material creation is under the control of his material energy. And he's saying this is divine. She's divine. Why? Because she belongs to the Supreme Lord. She's Krishna's energy. And it's very difficult to overcome this material nature, these three modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. We are bound by them. But he's saying, those who surrender to me, once one surrenders unto me, they're very easy. This whole ocean material existence, which seems unlimited, seems so troublesome, seems like, oh my God, what's happening? That same ocean come, becomes like a tiny, tiny water, puddle of water, tiny puddle of water, as big as a hoof print of a calf. You know, so small, this tiny, this huge ocean becomes so tiny. And a person who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna can easily cross beyond it. He says that that's the only way you can get out of the material world. So such puffed up uh, mundane scholars have to wait for the causeless mercy of the devotee of the Lord. One should therefore cultivate Krishna consciousness with faith and knowledge and in this way attain perfection. So if I say I want to do it by myself, I'm going to use my mental strength, my speculation, my whatever, my mind to, to, to try to get liberation. I can't. I have to come in contact with a devotee who is going to give me his mercy, who is going to give me the mercy of the Lord. And it's only then that I'll get liberation. So the proposal given is, my dear, my dear so-and-so, don't waste time. Just hear and chant. Just hear and chant and be guaranteed that you will get, you will go back home, back to Godhead. You will attain perfection. You will attain self-realization, the original position or, or whatever is, you know, our constitutional position. So it's said, Prabhupada is here. This is what Prabhupada is saying. Therefore, one should cultivate Krishna consciousness with faith and knowledge, and in this way, attain perfection. So have faith that I'm hearing Bhagavad, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, I will get perfection. I'm chanting Hare Krishna, I, I will get perfection. So, so just continue doing that. Is that all right? Yeah. Anyone wanted to add anything? Or? Comment or any other further questions? No, all good. All good. Then we'll stop here for today. Okay. Bhagavad Gita ki che, Shla Prabhupad ki che, Gopra Bhakta Vrinda ki che. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for listening and joining. Hare Krishna.